So do we understand this? So you cannot guess what the good thing is. You cannot guess what is the correct thing. And one thing that you have to remember is extremely important. If there is an error, the only reason for that error is you, not the computer, not the compiler, not the language. It's you because you did not follow the instructions properly. I'm sorry to be giving you the bad news, but that's how what programming is. You miss one thing, it's not going to run. Yes, sir. <laughs> to err is human. Definitely, you made a mistake. You're gonna, and that's going to happen a billion times. You're going to see me on Teams. You don't know what I'm going to say. What I'm saying, it doesn't make sense right now, but it's going to make sense later on. You're going to contact me on Teams. You're going to give me the URL for your repository. I'm going to pull your repository, look at your code, and I'm going to say, you see, you, you did this, you did that. You forgot to flush the keyboard. You did this. And I fix it. I give it back to you. I push it back to the repository. You pull it, diff it, look at the difference, and you reflect about me. How did I fix it for you? But that's the process in a nutshell that nobody understood what I'm saying, which is fine. At the end of the session, we'll understand. Okay? So that's essentially the process. So we have a common place in which we are going to put our code. Where? Uh, what can I use for this? Oh, I can actually use this one. So we have a common place that we're going to put our code in. And I had this beautiful pen to draw on a screen, but I think I left it in one of the labs. I have to go find out which lab it is. Anyway, so I'm going to use the mouse. But we have a common place which we are going to put our codes in. This common place is somewhere on the internet. We call this common place GitHub. What is GitHub? GitHub is a company who looked at the program called Git. So the program is called Git. Looked at the program called Git and said, oh my god, this is so useful. So let me make it easy for everybody to be able to use it. So it puts the Git program in his company and provides web interface for this application, Git. They make billions of dollars, and Microsoft buys it. OK? That's GitHub. OK? What is GitHub? It's a place where people keep their projects. It's what we call the mother source. OK? <coughs> or in, I call it mother source, but what uh, in industry, they call it it's upstream. See, upstream is a place the water comes and river comes down. The source of the, th uh, the river is always upstream, correct? That's upstream, where everything comes from. So we keep all our code in here. Hello. So what you're going to do, this is your computer, OK? Git, ha, GitHub has the program, GitHub has the program, Git installed in it, correct? You are installing the exact same program on your computer. So what you see over here is Git. Oh. What you see over, there you go. What, what you see over here is Git. And you have the exact same thing on your computer. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is your computer. Your PC. PC, your, your computer. Because if I say PC, people that Mac are going to get uh, offended. So your com computer. <laughs> OK. So got it? So you both have Git. Right? You know what's Git? Git is like that drill sergeant that is looking for everything. It's, it, it 
puts everything out in the microscope and exactly sees what's happening. F follows every trace of everything that you do with your code and remembers everything. Of course, you have to tell him where to get snapshots. You have to say, now, now, now. So all these port times that you say now, it takes a snapshot of everything. Five days from now, you can go back to your snapshot and see exactly what your uh, text looked like or whatever. You can draw a picture if you want to in there. It doesn't matter. It could be anything. It could be a huge project. As a matter of fact, Chrome, the browser, is there. That's where it is, the whole thing for Chrome. Linux, the operating system, is up there. And all flavors of it. Linux, uh, name the flavors. Anybody knows the flavors of, you know what I say when I say flavor, what does it mean? Flavor of Linux? Linux was an open source project. They put it on, actually, back to the uh, story of, good story to tell you, storytelling, kind of. You know, there is this guy called Linus Torvald, okay? It was this genius guy. I think he was Swedish, right? Or something like that. I don't know. So in his basement, he used to work with the operating system Unix. And he says, this is a very useful thing, but because it belonged to, I think, to IBM or whatever, I don't know. It, not everybody have, had access to it. He says, the heck with it. I'm going to write it. So he wrote the operating system. What is an operating system? Soul of, soul of the computer, which does what the soul does. Everything for, everything for the computer. So everything for the computer. All right? And if you are suddenly, you're, you're like shocked with like, you don't want to ask, you simply say pass. I'll go to the next one. Don't worry. Okay? <laughs> so, so what happens? He does this thing. So he, cre he creates Linux. Okay? Instead of Unix, it becomes Linux. And it makes it open source, which means everybody had access to it, to the source code. So what people did started contributing to it. And they kept providing code. Add this one to it, and it's going to be better. Add that one to it. So the, the help from all over the world kept pouring in and making the operating system richer and richer. And it came to the point that Linus couldn't handle it anymore. Just imagine the codes are coming in. You have to go through every single thing. I don't know which one to add, which one to remove. It's difficult. So he said, the heck with it. Like before, I'm going to write a program that does that for me. That program was called Git. OK? So that's what it is. And we are, if you know Git, you are 10 levels higher than a person that is 10 times better than you in programming to find a job. Because if you know how to program, but you cannot collaborate, you are worth nothing. OK? That's why I'm starting IPC with this. OK? And one thing that I want to please ask you to do,
the audio is back. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah, so not so try to remember what I just said. I just thought I'd nailed it. And right at that moment, he screwed everything up. <laughs> anyway, so that was the thing. So I told you, anybody recorded this by any chance? Lots of people record audio. Did anybody did that? Who says so? Oh, in my class, record video, schmidio, I don't care. Okay? I'm right now, I tell you. You're allowed to record anything, video, audio, anything you want. Because I'm doing it myself and posting it anyway. Uh, anyway, so, so yeah. So, thank you. <laughs> A little too late. but <laughs> Next time, everybody, look at this light, please. If it's not on, it means nothing is being recorded. So... The reason I did this, I was explaining to one of the students out there, there was this old movie called Naked Gun. In that movie, the guy was presenting, and he had a microphone like this. Like me, he takes a break. He forgets to turn it off and goes to the washroom. And he was on speakers in the hall, like the conference. So you would think what would happen, right? So that's why I turned it off, and I went over there just in case. But uh, <laughs> uh, my apologies. Anyways. But anyways, if you look at the silent movie, <laughs> you, will, you will remember what I was saying when I was doing it. So anyway, so I'm going to post it over there and I'm going to say this one doesn't have audio half of it. All right. So what we're going to do now is to help you to go through workshop zero. So make sure your computers are set up, your SSH keys are set up properly, your uh, uh, Linux, uh, your uh, Matrix account is set uh, hopefully, uh, if, if, Anybody over here who did not install PuTTY? Because we need that. So we, if, you, if you have a PC, do it right now. Just all you need to do is this. It, and it takes approximately 35 seconds. So all you need to do is go in a search and type PuTTY download. This comes up. Download PuTTY free SSH Telnet client. Download PuTTY again. Okay? And... Get the one that is for your operating I don't think anybody has uh, any operating system that is other than 64-bit. If your computer has an ARM processor, second, just choose the second one. If your computer is just a normal computer, you use the first one. If you have a Mac, you don't need to worry about this. Your computer comes with PuTTY, <laughs> which means you, you have a Mac? Oh, OK, it's a MacBook. OK, so you just open Terminal and do SSH. So, for, so download PuTTY, and when you download PuTTY, so anybody over here needs to help to download PuTTY? Anyone? Download PuTTY, go ahead, OK. Download PuTTY. And you have an Asus. I'm sure it's not ARM, correct? So the first one is the one? OK. You want me to take a look at it, make sure it's not ARM? Anyways, do MSI click on that one, to let it open. Next. 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 Oh, install. Install. Yes. Finish. You don't need to view it. Oh, OK, you viewed the read me file. That's fine. You're done. OK? <laughs> Very difficult task to do. OK, so, so uh, everybody has PuTTY on their computers, or you have a MacBook, one of these two. Either PuTTY or MacBook. Are we good? Are we all good? Are we good? One, two. OK. How many of you, I, I haven't checked my emails yesterday and the day before yesterday, so I didn't reply to those people who, who, uh, who sent me invitation for collaboration. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, it means you didn't go workshop zero yet. OK? You said, you said yeah, there you go. So I haven't accepted it yet, but I will. OK? And I'm going to explain stuff. So we're going to go through it now together. So how many of you did not install SSH key on their computers? If you don't know what I'm talking about, you didn't do it. OK, I'll come to you. He's going to come to you. Uh, any of you? Uh, OK, so, uh, so uh, of those who did not install SSH key on their computers, how many of them have Mac? How is it? You, did, you, you, you never said anything. Oh, you have a Mac? And you don't, yeah, you haven't installed SSH yet. You already did? Oh, yeah. The one, 
those who have Mac and did not install. Yes, you. Okay, so I'm going to come to you. Peter is going to go to people. Okay, so we're going to go. So we'll, I'm going to come to you. So I'm going to come first to the uh, Mac person, then I'm going to come to you. A after we, sure, we are sure everybody have installed uh, uh, SSH on their own computers, then we're going to all log into Matrix and make sure our Matrix has SSH key too. Okay? First, I'm going to, you have your GitHub account created or not yet? Create your GitHub account first. Okay, if you do not have an SSH key and have a GitHub account, let me know and I'm going to come. No, no. Did you create the GitHub? Did you create SSH key? So oh, you're good. So type GitHub. Not for that. GitHub. That's mine. <laughs> okay, GitHub. And sign up. School. Okay. For those people who did the GitHub account, I know it's a boring day, but a lab that we are going around helping people, it's going to be like that. Bear with me. It's going to be much more challenging the next week. Okay? So bear, bear with me. So, yes, sir. Uh huh. No, no. This IPC is different. Oh, completely different. Everything's different here. Everything's, for this class, everything's different. So you have to do all these things. Nobody does this. Okay. This is real stuff. Okay, yeah. Do that. And make sure you remember them. Okay. Those people created the GitHub accounts. If it's not, if you did not use Seneca email, right now go to your profile and then click uh, go to settings and then go to email. So to, this is how you go to settings. This is what you do. If you did not create your GitHub account with Seneca email, this is what you do. So GitHub, and you click over here at right top. You go to settings. You click on emails. You add an email address and make it primary. That's your Seneca email. You can have 50 emails on, on GitHub. It doesn't matter. But make sure you have your Seneca email. You see it says myseneca.ca. If you don't have that one as primary, add that one and make it primary. You can always change it later on. But while you're at school, please do that. Okay? So that's why you're creating it with that. Oh, for, I told you for usernames what to choose, right? No, what I'm saying is for user ID, okay? Um, I, if you did it, close your account, go to another one. I'm going to explain something to you that is very important, okay? You got to be CEOs of companies one day, okay? Cat killer is not going to be a good user ID for a CEO. Choose your CEO properly. Choose your, choose your user IDs properly, something nice, okay? Did I say that? Okay, oh, so you, did, you chose it properly and you're happy? Okay, so what I'm saying is that this is going to stay forever. Why? Because you want the history. When you go someplace applying for a job, as soon as they see you, the first thing is Googling your name. And the thing that comes up is your GitHub account. You want it to say you started at 2020, 2022. If you change it later on, then all your history is gone. You want history. You want experience. They look for that. So please, okay? May email ID, you can change it to whatever you want. Email, you can have 50 emails. You can change it. You can delete it. No problem. But user ID is with you forever. Yes. Oh, yes. That's what I'm saying. Like, because when you are going to a company, the three years that you're in Seneca is going to be added to your history. If you look at this one, if you look at my profile over here, this is my student profile. It's going to say, anyways, in here somewhere it says joined at this time. I, I don't know. If, uh, you can actually read all the stuff over here. It says how active you were and how you, how, what you were doing. If you look, just, just take a look at this. Let me show you something.
See? GitHub. And you click on it, immediately it comes up over here. And as soon as they see these badges, it means you're active. And this is not that I did something extraordinary. You're just active. They look at all these things and they look at your profile and they see you've been working on Git. That's a huge advantage. Bear that in mind. Okay? So don't change it. That's why I'm saying choose the proper thing. Yes? You can't. You have to close it and read. I don't think you. Google it. I don't know. I don't think you can. Let me see your username. If it's a nerd thing, it's good. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. What's yeah. wrong with that? Oh, yeah. Oh, if you have a username that has numbers and name and stuff like that, like, I don't know, whatever, it's fine. fine. Okay? Like, if you have, like, cool nerdy thing, like Darth Vader, that's good. But if you have something like, I don't know, Texas uh, uh, axe murderer, then that's not good. Okay? So, put it, cool names, nerdy names are good. Okay? There's no problem with it. Just, just... Think about it, like if you look at your boss's user ID and you see that person wrote something like, you know what I mean? Um, bad, you don't, want, you don't want it. But if it's something cool, you're gonna say, hey, there's a nice guy. So yeah, that, that user ID is pretty okay, okay, that's very good. So how far are you? So you created? Uh, did you uh, confirm with your email? Everything's good? So it's time to rock and roll, okay.